Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm really sorry for my long inactivity on my YouTube channel, but it was really due to my university exams and I really needed to work like really hard for this year. However, right now the summer break starts and uh, I have more time uh, to upload, re-upload some uh, math YouTube videos. Uh, so as you can see, like I've changed my setup, uh, which you will, see, you will see like in a second. And uh, if you have like any recommendations about uh, my new setup, please let me know in the comments if you have any advice. And uh, I also like thought about what should we upload as our first video after like our long uh, inactivity time. And I thought like it is like the best choice is basically the, the IMO for this year, like IMO 2023. So that's exactly what we'll be doing uh, in this video. So we'll be solving in this video the first question in the IMO test for this year. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Okay, so in this video, we'll be solving the IMO day one, the problem one that appeared in this year IMO, which was held, by the way, in Japan. Uh, so basically, in this question, uh, this is basically a number theory question, as you can see, like we have some divisors here. So let's start with it. So the question asks us to determine all composite integers in greater than one. So no primes here that satisfy the following property. So if we have like all the divisors, d1, d2, up to dk, if we write them in ascending order, starting from one as d1 and ending with the same number n as dk, uh, they are telling us that di divides di plus one plus di plus two or any i between like uh, one and k minus two. Okay. So how exactly can we like approach this question? So one very, very useful idea and very common idea when you have like a set of divisors, like when you have the divisors of the number like d1, d2 up to dn, like there are lots of questions uh, that ask you um, like that, uh, that are similar in this way. So usually how can we deal with these like di's? How can we deal with them? The simplest thing to do is just to take n and write its prime factorization. When you do this, you can know like uh, actually some some useful stuff you can know for example what is d2 d3 like uh, d4 and you can also know what is dk dk minus 1 dk minus 2 and the reason is simple if you if you have like the number n as uh, p1 to the alpha 1 p2 to the alpha 2 and so on like you have uh, written its prime factorization then what is the first like d what is the first divisor of course after, after one it's simply this first prime right like it's p1 okay so here like like we figured out what, what is d2 uh, in the same way we can like find if we know what is p2 then uh, or sorry d2 then we also know what is the last number uh, what is the last divisor which is uh, simply uh, dk minus one it's what like it's n divided by p1 because like as you know uh, whenever like we multiply like uh, the first divisor and the last divisor then like we get the same number n okay so let's see what exactly can we do in this question so First of all, like what, what uh, like have they told us about? So they told us first that we have di divides di plus one plus di plus two. Of course, like here, this is uh, like this symbol is simply the divisibility symbol. So like uh, di is a divisor of this thing. Okay, so this is like always correct for any i between one and k minus two. Okay. So as we said, we we'll simply apply like uh, the the advice, the general advice that uh, we mentioned earlier. So we will just take n and write its, its prime factorization, like p1 to the alpha 1, p2 to the alpha 2, and up to like p, uh, let's say, okay, we already have a variable m, so let's say pm to the alpha m. Okay, so now basically, we want to apply what they told us, like di divides di plus one plus di plus two. Uh, of course, like how can we deal with the di's? We simply uh, like can uh, know, as we said, like the first few d's and the last few d's. So we'll simply like do this. Clearly, we will not substitute i equals one because it will be useless, right? Because uh, like you will get one divide something, it's useless. So we'll start from like i equals two. Okay, so let's start with this. So if we substitute i equals two, what do we get? So we get d2 divides d3 plus d4. Okay, now what is d2? We already like said that, right? Like d2 is for sure 
P1. Of course, here, like the prime factorization, we always sort in ascending order. So D2 is P1, okay. But what is D3? Like, that's the question. What do you think is D3? Try, like, to think about it. Well, like, here, actually, we have two choices, or two cases, let's say, for D3. So, D3, it, it's either, like, P2, the next prime, like, because the next prime is uh, the second divisor, it may be. But we also have another possibility that it's actually P1 squared. So it might be P1 squared. Um, like, because maybe, like, the next prime is, like, really large, that it's greater than P1 squared. So, like, we have two possibilities to discuss. Okay, so let's, like, take, for example, this case first, P1 squared. Okay, so let's take, first of all, like, case one. In this case, we'll be discussing uh, D3 is equal to P1 squared. Okay, so in this case, what can we do? Let's simply substitute. We have P1 divides P1 squared plus D4. Like, for also for D4, you can know it by, like, simply uh, also doing a similar discussion. Uh, like, uh, we have multiple choices. For example, here, it might be uh, P2 or it might be P1 cubed. However, like, we're, we don't even need that, because just take a look here. We can immediately know what is it. Like, from this divisibility relation, we can simply cancel the P1 squared, right? Uh, this is a simple divisibility property. Like, whenever you have uh, something divides uh, something, like uh, A divides B, then you can simply uh, subtract any multiple of uh, A, like the divisor. So, we can simply, like, ignore the P1 squared. So, guess what? That just means that P1 divides D4. And guess what? That just leaves us with one possibility for D4. D4 is what? Can it be P2? Of course, no. Because we'll get, have like a prime divides another prime contradiction. So that means just that D4 is also a power like of P1, which is P1 cubed, right? Uh, okay, so we figure out what is D4. It's P1 cubed. All right, so now we have uh, D2 is P1, D3 is P1 uh, squared, uh, D4 is P1 cubed. What if we repeat like the same process? So for example, next we can like uh, substitute P1 squared divides P1 cubed plus D5. What does that also mean? Like easily, or we can also get that P1 squared divides uh, D5. So also D5 is a power of P1. So again, like we just get that uh, D5 is P1 to D4. So if you repeat this again and again and again, like uh, of course the process will eventually end. And we'll have like all the divisors are just like P1 to the power, like to some power. So if we repeat this uh, again and again and again, we'll get that simply the last number, which is N itself, is just P1 to some power. So that just means that uh, like N is equal, let's say like to uh, P1 to the alpha 1. That's what like we will get. Okay, so like uh, we got that our number n is a power of a prime but does like all powers like do all powers of primes like work let's see so let's take like a prime a uh, power of prime let's say like p uh, to some like pump some power let's say m so let's write the divisors of this number they are one p p square p cube up to p to the m well do we also always have that p to the i divides p to the i plus 1 plus p to the i plus 2 of course we have so we're done basically like uh, we, we have like our set of solutions that is basically uh, any power of prime works however like be careful like m here cannot be 1 because uh, they told us n is composite right so just be careful about this so here uh, n equ uh, like equals p to the m is just uh, a solution or uh, like first of all let's put the condition where m is uh, greater than or equal to 2 is the solution. Okay, let's put this in a green box. Okay, so now we have like our first set of solutions. However, be careful, we, we shouldn't forget the second case, like this was case 1, d3 equals p1 squared. So the second case is simply uh, d3 equals p2. Okay, so we're done with this. Now we need like to discuss the other case. Okay, let's go for it. So case two, 
d3 is equal to p2. Okay. So what can we do in this case? Like if we now substitute, we have like p, uh, p1, sorry, divides p2 plus uh, d4. What does that mean? Like that's not useful at all. Um, like uh, for example here, uh, if, like if we apply this, we don't like have uh, like in the beginning, for example, we, we, can, we cannot have that p1 divides uh, like p1 squared or something. We cannot cancel here, right? Like maybe it, it's useful, like if you take a look here, for example, d4 cannot be p1 squared, right? So it cannot be like a power of p1. So maybe it's p3. Like, or actually, I think the only possibility here is p3. Mm. Or wait, it might be p1, p2 squared, though, actually. Yeah, like you see, like it's not that useful as the, the beginning. So what can we do here? Like, remember, what are we doing in this question? We have like a set of uh, divisibility relations. So we started with the first few. But remember what? We also know something like about the last divisor. So why don't we try like blocking in the divisibility relation the last few numbers, the last few Ds. So let's like go ahead and do this. So what can we do? Like what is the last divisibility relation? Simple. It's just uh, D. Okay, let's, it's DK minus 2 divides DK minus 1 plus DK. By the way, what is DK? DK is N, right? So let's just re remember that DK is N. What is DK minus 1? dk minus 1. We also know it. So, uh, like, we have actually, when we write the divisors in ascending order, we have a very nice, like, property. That if you multiply d1 with uh, dk, then we get n, 1 times n. If we multiply d2, because d2 is the smallest number, uh, or the second smallest number, divisor, and the, like, if we write dk minus 1, it's the second largest number, so they also should multiply to n. So, simply, if we know dk minus 1, then... Uh, Oh, sorry, if we know d2, then dk minus 1 is just n over d1, right? Uh, sorry, d2. But what is d2? It's just like p1. So we know what is dk minus 1. In the same way, uh, we know dk minus 2. It's also n to what? Uh, here, to p2. Okay, so now, like, we know, like, all the primes here. We simply can substitute immediately. By the way, like, maybe you're wondering what happens if, like, our number n is perfect square. So, like, as we said, like, uh, if you multiply we will get uh, always n, 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 n. But when we get the same number, like they, they both will be like the square root of n. So we also like get uh, our number n because square root of n squared is just n. So no problem at all. Okay, let's simply substitute this. By the way, like, uh, like we can simply cancel dk, right? Because dk is just n. And of course, like uh, this is a divisor of n. So of course it divides n. So we can simply cancel it. So we can actually just try uh, dk minus 2 divides dk minus 1 and now after substitution we just get that uh, n over p2 divides n over p1 and uh, okay now like we have uh, like a silly fraction so we cannot deal with fractions like this of course they are integers but uh, I prefer like just multiply by p1 p2 like both the numerator and denominator right because you can think about the divisibility as uh, numerator and denominator. So you can simply just say that uh, P1 times N divides uh, N times P2. Of course, you can cancel the N from both sides to get P1 divides P2. Wait, what? P1 divides P2? A contradiction, right? Okay, so basically, uh, we're done in this case. We don't have any solution. So simply like the only solutions in, uh, like, uh, that, like are these that we get in the first case. So simply n is just a power of prime. Uh, of course, a power of prime. So that means uh, it's not a prime. It's a composite number. Uh, so simply that's it. Like we're done. These are like the sets of solutions and uh, we are done. All right. So that was like uh, our IMO day one, uh, 2023. Uh, as you can see, it's not a difficult question at all. Like it's in, in fact, like very standard idea. Like whenever you have uh, the divisors from D1 up to DK, it's always common to just put the prime factorization and like uh, discover what's, what happens like here. So uh, this was a standard question. Uh, and uh, of course, like we'll be going through the other questions as well. And also like we'll be doing, uh, like we're, we'll be continuing what we've started with like uh, in the beginning. So for example, we'll continue the IMO past uh, questions series, like uh, only problem one and problem four. I think we'll also like uh, continue the, our geometry series 
And if you have like any ideas, please let me know in the comments. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel and see you guys in the next video.